And welcome to Win at the Horses podcast. I'm Joe Kelly. Bill Kelly, a little bit under the weather. He may join us, may not, but uh, we wish him well. And we are fresh from our trip to Las Vegas for the National Horse Players Championship, the 25th anniversary of it. And before we get into our very, very special guests, I want to give uh, thanks to the NTRA, Michelle and Holly and the entire staff, a big, big production over at the Horseshoe Casino and the Event Center. I wish I had done better. A lot of players wish they have done better. But we have a guest on the line right now. He is Eric Giolata. hope I pronounced Eric's last name correctly, who is a six-time qualifier for the NHC out in Las Vegas. He double qualified one year. He's an outstanding ha handicapper from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. We were uh, really blessed to be joined at a table by Eric, his son Tyler, Ed Reedy, and Joe Rich. Great, great time from uh, Thursday onward to Sunday. So, hey, that's a long intro. Got to welcome Eric Gialata. I pronounced it right, right, Eric? Uh, it's actually Galata. Galata, like, Galata okay. Glad to meet you, but that's all right, though. I didn't okay. that. Galata, that, but that's even easier. No, it was it was a really good event. It was just, the, like I said, I was disappointed on how I did because you prepare so much for that and then just have, you know, probably the worst tournament I had all year, you know, it, you know, the, just the way it fell. And, you know, in that event, if you get a little behind, you start pressing, changing your picks and it can all go down in a hurry. And it, it did it right. once again. So the, let's talk about the preparation. I mean, this is, you know, your sixth time at the NHC. What, what goes in? Tell me the first year that you qualified some of the preparation and as you you've got into a, a veteran of the NHC, uh, well, what goes into preparation? That year was to die. I actually, you know, I, I grew up with harness racing and I was starting a poker thing was going on and I was just looking for poker tournaments. And I found these horse on NHC qualify.com like way back in the day. And uh, mm -hmm. I just, um, I followed it for like a year, you know, the whole thing, you know, how, you know, tournament, I was following some articles and that because the DRF used to cover it a lot and mm -hmm. you could read stuff in there about it. And so then I had a few bucks. It was a hundred dollars to get in their feeders. What they did was a hundred dollar feeder every week for three weeks. And then they took the top 10%, which you'd usually be like 300 people. So you'd have 30 each week. The final week would be like 90 people. And the first time I tried, I actually got in. Oh, okay. And wow. It was kind of like I didn't know thoroughbreds that well, to be honest with you back then. And uh, I think I told you this. I played Joe Talamo and Leperu were both bugs. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. Joe got me through that feeder that day. He won three races, like over $20 to win. Right. And Leperu, I actually did better at the tournament than I have ever had. Uh, so, you know, so sometimes I tell people it ain't <laughs> the more you know, they don't always make it better. But uh, Right, right. You know, there was only 300 people back in. Um, it was at the Red Rock. And I was hooked once I got there. Then I started really. And I have a friend who grew up with my brother who went moved to Florida in high school. He ended up being a trainer. He moved back up. My friend Al Goblick mm -hmm. qualified this year and unfortunately wasn't able to make it out. But uh, with the Zilt, you know, he yeah. has cancer. But, uh, yeah, we wish him well. So he, he, he kind of showed me everything about the backside thoroughbred i mean you know and then i started learning more and more you know and then i actually quit for a few years playing in the tournaments and then i got back into it in like 2015 and then i've been playing pretty much you know ever since then straight through now you know now, so now as far yeah how about this year qualifying how, how did you qualify this year well i came through the points uh for the okay. first time ever because it's the first time you know you get 1500 participation points and i usually can't i have to play the feeders to get in i don't right. have the bank rule and uh yeah me too <laughs> and that was the way i got in i mean i was fortunate like the first four or five i got in in may or whatever i had real good finishes on friday so i try to get in them friday ones because they give out so many points oh okay i mean they're harder to hit but it's one in five to get in it right. at least gives you a chance and so then I got a good jump on every, you know, right then. And then, then I kept playing, you know, 
you know, I play two or three a week to try to play for Fridays. I didn't get in every week. And then I, I would have had enough in August if I would have knew what it was going to land on. I was surprised it landed that a lot lower than everybody anticipated. Now, this year, I think it's going to be higher with them giving out points for those two big events there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they haven't updated it yet, right? No. I mean, right, well, you right. know what? They did give out points for the first one last year, the last chance. But this other okay. one, that's going to be a lot of points given out for that. So I I don't know. It'll just see how the year goes. I mean, you get kind of handcuffed. I mean, once you get so far, you got to play then. I mean, you know, hope you just need a score. You're not trying. To, it's a lot better when you're trying to play for 35th with 400 people in it than right. playing for one or two spots, you know. So so with the points, do they average – they take the top eight scores and do you have to, do you have it's to play on track percent every Friday? So oh, any okay. tournament, any tournament, they're giving away more than two seats. Mm -hmm. They uh, give out points to the top 10%. So if there's only 90 people in a tournament, right. If they're giving away two seats, they'll give out nine scores okay. for that Friday one. You're getting average 450 a week in that. So that's 45 scores. I mean, I seen last week I had 480 something already coming in. Uh, wow. Now, towards the end, I always mm -hmm. say, tell like, after a lot of people double qualify, it's kind of good to play in that, too, because guys going for the top 25 points will buy three entries, you know, because they get paid the top 25. So oh, they'll, right, right. So 15 of them will have – and they're not even playing for a spot because they're double qualified already. Right, so, right. Yeah, I always wondered what the, the – end, uh, it's not bad to, you know, play in – in those because it's not ends up not being one in 143 you know right. they take you know you, you eliminate you know you know sometimes as many as 60 you know 60 entries mm -hmm. so but I've, I've got in all, all kind of ways i mean it's that was the first time at points i've won two free ones to get in uh now those are tough right yeah they are yeah wow they are but i played I that free one on ht every week it's like 50 dollar one they give out credit. oh yeah yeah right yeah and i usually win two or three times a year so i kind of look at that like if i play it 40 times out of the year and i win it two or three times mm -hmm. hopefully when i play the free ones i do good it's sort of the same thing you know yeah there's so do, you many. do you ever kick yourself that you won the the, the free one that if you've been in the big the big one for the nhc seat does it get into you bother you yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just it's you just need. I mean, I'm just it's it's zero for eight now out there. Well, zero for seven, I guess mm -hmm. I am out there, and it's just uh, it's frustrating out there. I don't know if it's because another thing is we don't play fairgrounds or uh, turfway. Um, what's the other track? Oaklawn, because right. on horse tourneys they don't have the rights for those tracks. Now that's right. Good yeah. news is after you left, I. Mm -hmm. When everybody left our table, I went and sat with the guy, and I guess he was sitting with that Ed from uh, De Rosa from uh, Twin Spires. Oh yeah, yeah. And they had on that book tournaments coming soon, so he said they're supposed to start something just like horse tourneys in July, oh, kind of okay. like feeders where they used to have Twin Spires used to do a lot of nice things for like the lower end player, mm -hmm. and that would be nice because they said they're going to try to concentrate on the tracks that horse tourneys doesn't use because all the Churchill tracks in. Right, right. You have Ellis Park and Fairgrounds. So that'll be nice if they do that. Right. Because uh, right now, Horse Thorny, he kind of has that monopoly. I mean, you know, now with, there used to be a lot of other places to play. Like there was mm -hmm. like two or three other websites in the past. Like uh, that hung on for a while. I mean, you had Racetrack Warriors. There was another one of them guys in Minnesota did. That was a good site. They right. used to do the World Series, you know, try to qualify for the World Series. But it's hard now to play any speeders that are forty nine, fifty dollars. Like I mean, yeah, yeah. And you know, you get five, six. You know, you got to hit two races. You know, I've hit, I've hit the board on five out of six races and didn't get in sometimes. And it's like, and that's frustrating. And you put up fifty dollars to play for Keeneland or something. I mean, it's tough. I mean, yeah, those six so. race, uh, the early birds. I've never had success at them. I'm better in the long. Yeah, because you get depending. smaller fields there too. And, right. And, you know, and it's just, I have better luck at them actually playing just like off who I know, looking at it real quick and just putting it in. If it's a small field, I played the longest shot. Right, you know, right. Sometimes on them quick ones, because it's just such a, 
you know, if one price comes in, you don't have it, you're done there. I mean, mm -hmm. and then if you go the other way, you got to have four winners sometimes to get in, you know, if it's right, if right. five or six, $5 horses win. So, you know, but it's fun. I mean, I, to me, I just, I, I'm so lucky to be playing this game. I don't, you know, that I fell into it because I don't know what I'd be doing with myself. I was so competitive back in the day. Now you get older. Right. I just like, you know, cause I only play the horses gamble and maybe 10 times a year now. I mean, the big days, breeders cup, Mm -hmm. And then you see me gamble and I gamble when I'm not there because you're looking at so many races and I've had success gambling, which I did again this year. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I made a profit every day gambling on horses. That's right. And, and, and your son my, and your son Tyler came out there and, and seemed to have a great time. Oh yeah. And that was great yeah. being with them. Right. I mean, having a guy with me all the time. And now he understands, even today he was like pulling up the feeder, you know, I mean, you know, watching. Oh, really? Things. Okay. So he had an ID. He's like, wow, look at your score. You know, because you know, I put right. up 104 today, and then he sat there for four days and seen me put up $20. And you remember the one race I hit was I played the wrong race, and that was one of my Yeah, winners. yeah. Oh, I remember so, that, yeah. And I thought that would change the whole weekend. Sometimes something like that in sports, you know, where it goes, you get a break like that. Right. And I thought that was a lucky break. I played the wrong race at Oaklawn, and the horse hits. Because when your dad pointed out that it was Carl Broberg, and I'm not a big fan, and right, right. I'm like, I couldn't have played Carl Broberg. There's no way. And when I looked at that, I'm like, look at this way today. And that's how I, you know, I had internet trouble out there. You remember? I was having oh, trouble yeah. getting on. Right, right. I'm not making excuses. I mean, there's, yeah, you know, but like in the past, I had my own internet out there because I just thought, you know, I didn't think of that until I got home because I used mm -hmm. to keep stats for a, a local high school team. Okay. And they would just tell me to hang on to it all year. It like it's like a little thing you carry, and that worked really good. So the last few times I never had trouble with the internet. For some reason, I think it was my own fault. And I should have had like I, I ran into someone at the airport. They said, Oh, you should have the tech guy come over because I think it was my own fault later. I realized I wasn't doing something, you know, on that settings or whatever. And yeah, it was kicking me off. And you know, and I wasted how many times, you know, an hour, two hours each day. Like, I mean, just playing with that. And that gets yeah, there's, frustrating. There, there's a lot. I mean, this was my first year experience it. And there, there's a lot you got to soak up and not get distracted. I think Saturday I came down, I had all my plays already. Or if I got the price, I'm, I'm usually a long shot player. But I got down there in two races. I had no intention of playing. I'm sitting there and just the atmosphere. I jumped into it and wasted two of my picks. Oh, I know. That's so hard. <laughs> Have you I, had I, that? I've, I've did that so many times. And then you get to the end and right. you have four races you like. Right. And I think Tyler said the one day I bet he marked on 10 of the races I bet to win on. Mm -hmm. Just bet, physically bet. I hit six of them. Like, oh, wow. but I didn't put them in the tournament. And then right. there you are. You're thinking they're going to be cheap. You don't put them in. Then you get $13 to win, you know, six to place. It's 19. I mean, I left a lot. I mean, I had a horrible, but Saturday I could have made that up. There's no doubt. I missed the right. horse. I was eating lunch. I mean, uh, that was a big one. I had two horses I liked that ended up being $22 to place horses. So you count that. I mean, start adding it up. I did leave some horses out there. I mean, even though my day yeah. was so bad. Yeah. I mean, you, you, Go. Do you look online? They have everybody's plays. Well, I I don't. I haven't did that. No. I yeah. mean, because I get so frustrated. You know, I even right. missed a race on Sunday, but I knew I missed it at that point because I had Steve Bick on. I went up to my room. Okay. And I had to go. To, you know, I was in the bathroom, and I he wasn't. He said, "Oh, they're on the track," and I thought, "Okay, I'm heading down there." I'm like, "Oh my!" And all of a sudden, he says, "They're in the gate," and oh. uh, his thing's a little late coming on if you realize that if you listen to him okay it was like 30 seconds behind the actual uh you know the actual screen up there i mean that right, happens right. now with the streaming at home like if you're watching your races on FanDuel with the app right and they go in like you can get shut out you know like you got to watch that so that's why that force tourney's added that feature uh random picks i do that soon i qualify for something like I'll soon they come up for Friday. I'm in now. I'll right. hurry up and do random picks. Okay. As I always think, if I'm in a car wreck, something happens, at least I yeah. got something in. And yeah. 
Because, I, I mean, that kills me when I've actually missed the tournament. I don't know how guys do it a lot. I mean, I see guys two, three entries, 165, and they don't. You yeah, know, they yeah, don't you see X, 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 right? And I'm like, that would just mentally just mess me up with my budget. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. like, I've had it happen. And right. that's why now I go to that random picks and boom, I do it. And and you just change it. It happened because I work yeah. night turn and sometimes I don't get a chance. I'll do my picks at night, but then I want to look at the scratches or whatever. And the other night that happened in uh, the parks one, I didn't wake up in time. Mm -hmm. And then I needed a horse in the last and both my horses were scratched. I had the favorite like and I couldn't get home. And you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. So. The things the things we do to get in the starters gate for horse racing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I like it's better to I mean, you know, you're paying, you know, he's taking whatever he takes up, but right. I right. like I think it's a better option to you know, I'd like to get a bank and play in some of these bigger ones. I mean, sometimes I get in them if I win a twelve dollar one with two hundred people in it, I'll have a bank for a while. But right. You gotta keep you gotta keep winning like to have a you know a good bank. I mean, because mm -hmm. I, I should have I had money in there a while back and I should have played in some of these like the Keeneland one, because I've made it to Hawthorne, Kentucky Dons. Um, I've won, you know, I've won a bunch of, I won Colonial Dons one year. So, I mean, I've won other feeders, but they used to be cheaper. Though. There's no doubt they were a lot cheaper. He right. used to do one in 10 and it would be $17, $18. Now he loves to do the one in five, but he charges 40 or 50. So. Okay. Well, it seems like you, you definitely got a great, strategy i mean you don't go in there blindly you know you know the ins and outs of what it's going to take to be successful so that that's great yeah i know it's just totally i gotta cool. i gotta rewind this interview after and and, and uh listen to what i should be doing because <laughs> you, you mean, got a lot of knowledge on it and, you, and you're passionate about it so that's great yeah i mean i i just got i really worked this time with even one of my friends uh he's did so good out there aj oh you yeah, know, AJ, AJ, yeah. Man, he's four for four until this and Right. He helped me out with my organization and everything. And I was like, had this stuff. You remember my phone kept going off for my. Yeah. Plate. Yeah. I, with the warnings, uh, the media and, alerts. And, right. And it's funny now I didn't cancel some. I'm still getting like aqueduct. Like on Saturday, I get an aqueduct on my alarm going off because I don't I have it still on, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, that helped a lot. It's just I wasn't hitting them. And then it just gets so frustrating when you're like, you know, I mean. That, you know, you have to, and I kept saying, and I didn't want to panic, but when you go, when you're 0 for 12, 0 for 14, man, that's tough to yeah. try to come out of that. But any consolation, I ran into, you know, I ran into Justin Mastari, and he, I think it was Sunday, and I was talking about how he was doing, and he had a few few bad breaks where he could have done better, and he, he won it. And uh, Mike's, you know Mike Somich? Yeah, I know the racing name. Racing dudes. Yeah, he does racing yeah. dudes. And oh, he does that. Is that what he does? Okay, yeah, he's he, in it too. He was sure. hanging on my. He was staying on my floor. We, me, and my dad were going back to my hotel room, and he was going back to the elevator, and I didn't realize. And he kind of had a similar story. Some tough beats, and he did well. I think he won one Saturday, in the tournament. He had zero points on a Friday, and he won the on Saturday. So he went to the final table. I think one year. Oh yeah. Well, there yeah. was yeah that one guy came. There's always, I usually, I did take a picture of people behind me to see who got in. I haven't looked at it. Oh, okay. But it always happens. Someone between like zero and $10 will jump up there. I mean, so it, you know, I've had them days. I've had a day where I got 200 on six races. I mean, it, it, right. it can happen. I mean, you know, Derby Wars used to use them six. Uh, and, that, and that happened to me. If you, they do that dollar tournament now on horse tourneys. You ever see there's a dollar tournament. Yeah. When they yeah, first right. started coming out, well, I had a dollar left in my account. I said, oh, I'll do my picks. So I didn't get in. You know, I tried to get in. So I already had the, the handicap and done. So I put my picks in that thing. And I put up like 240 something. Wow. I would have blew everybody out. And then I won like, you know, like $100 or something. I'm like, because it was a dollar tournament. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I never played it again because I'm like, that just frustrated me because if I would have won that feeder in the morning, the quick one, yeah, then he would have got home. You know, I had like the highest score for a long time, like it right. was crazy. So, yeah. Um, speaking of uh, handicapping strategy, I want to ask you because I heard something really interesting you said a, a 
a couple of years ago on Steve Bix uh, at the races, he asked you about your your handicapping strategy, and you were using one of the the handicapping services. But you found that I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but you said something like if if you won a big race, big price, there were so many other people using the same service that. Well, that's what we found out, like at right. race lens and all that. Mm -hmm. You'll see their their horse. And now a lot of people are jumping on that guy. It seems like he has a good thing going with that Equity Edge or whatever you guys had, I think, didn't he? Yeah, you know, I, I use HTR. My dad uses uh, Equine Edge. Yeah. yeah. I never paid for anything. Like, I have some stuff, like, because a lot of times they would give you, this year they were only giving, like, there was times they gave you, like, a year free for, like, some of this stuff when you qualify. Right, right. And I, I would go through it and I would, it would just seem like you'd be in a tournament with 34 people and then like you hit a good horse and nine people have it. And it's like, you know, I kind of like to do, you know, I how the tracks playing the speed and then like I have these figures I get, you know, off a of free site and right. I, uh, I use them after they come out, I get them in the morning and then I usually will have the form at night. Uh, you know, I'll have my picks and then I'll check them, you know, with that. And to mm -hmm. see how the tracks playing, you know, how some of these tracks are playing like merry-go-round sometimes, and it's you can eliminate a lot of horses, you know, when you, you mm -hmm. just get the front end going, you know. So, so uh, you like a lot of early speed on? on yeah, some, I, a lot yeah, of times, you know how yeah. dirt races are. I right, mean, right. I like the I like the turf races better to watch as a fan, but like mm -hmm. the dirt sometimes on these big days, they just they have the tracks of, you know like lightning fast that right you know that that's why they'll be setting records and everything else and it's like they go wire to wire and you know if you yeah you know, well, you get that. well that's I, good sometimes i wonder because like even i'll look and i'll think wow this horse looks like the way the track's playing he's nine to one why isn't no one playing this horse it looks so easy then you start talking yourself off it because it's not bet down more than he then you you know, all of a sudden he wins by five lengths going away and you, and right. you tend to one. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, being a you know competitive horse tournament player like yourself. Other horse players that are in these tournaments, do you have any that you you admire and and, and uh, respect the way they handle things? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, you know, like I said, there's a lot of good players out there, but it's it's. Like I said, Ed's a really good player. Was playing. Yeah, your buddy Ed Reedy. Right? I mean, you know, I don't really get because a lot of guys will muscle your run too, and that that's hard when you're you know they have three entries and mm -hmm. you know then you see their wife's playing or whatever you know what I mean. So right, they can right. muscle your run. That's the way that point thing gets at the end. I really don't think the guy who wins the points is the best handicapper because, in my opinion, he's been playing three entries right right or since he's been up there and he's just thought you know i mean everything he can go to he flies everywhere and plays the mac i mean i mean that's the way there's a loophole i mean if i had the money and everything i'd definitely do the same thing there's no doubt about it i'm i'm always right. looking for an advantage i mean right and they do it and that's but do i think i'd love to just see guys have like the guy 20 guys who won this or whatever and have it mm -hmm. televised where they just yeah. show up and they don't know the race they're going to do 15 races on a busy day and they don't know the races until an hour before and it's like they get one entry yeah just hand them a form and freaking <laughs> pencil and let them go at it and see, see who's the best see how it goes yeah that that would be interesting especially for horse players to watch because yeah, you like start that. getting all this money and then a lot of times you know i'm in a tournament i didn't realize till i was at penn national one year and uh mm -hmm. They're like, oh, anybody now can come up and claim, you know, if they have a horse run. And I'm thinking like five or six guys will get up. There was like 50, 60, 70 guys got up out of 200 that had connections wow. in the races. I'm like, you know, so then you start thinking, oh, my, now they're running horses for that day. And, you know what I mean? So, yeah. You start, well, you don't have no one on the backs, you know, no help anywhere. I mean, you start playing for a million dollars, you know, people, you know, they could hold their horse back. I mean, it's good they have a lot of plays. I mean, that's one thing with the NHC. You got to, you just can't hit one horse on the weekend and, and win money. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one good thing about it. But I mean, you you're know, never going to stop it. I mean, they when they only did right. one entry, you'd get in and no one would play anymore. So then they started doing two, or you'd just play like your brother, or your your wife, right. or whoever. So that stops. So the two 
button two goes a lot better, I think. Uh, you know, I'd like to have two. Even though I did have it the one year, I, I did decent on the one, but that was confusing too, though. I mean, it's it's not easy. But you can I'll, take more chances, you know, like with, mm -hmm. with two, especially on the mandatories. Right, right. Now, how about um, the different venues that, that you've been through? You, you mentioned Red Rocks and the Horseshoe and everything. What what, what has been your favorite place to play? And, and Well, I like, maybe I like this setup as far as the arena goes because you're right. around the players. Mm -hmm. You know, Treasure Allen got so big, I wouldn't see guys all week. And Ed, you're playing on all kinds of different floors and different wow. rooms. And, uh, and here you get to see everybody pretty much. And – and that's nice because it's a big room. Red Rock just grew out. I mean, it could only fit like 250, 300 people. And that, when I played there, they drew, and that's where you sat where you sat. Like, oh, yeah. Wow. And, and like, it, that's the way they did it back in the day. You sat by a guy in like in them little, you know, how the cubicles are. Oh, the, yeah, the yeah. Old, like the TV you know, how they are at the race books. And, uh, yeah. and then they ran, you know, then some people got to sit at the bar and everything because they ran out of seats and, and then they realize, wait a minute, all the family members are over there. So everybody's walking over to the restaurant to talk to them because Red Rock has like a restaurant right next to their sports book. So, oh, OK. You know, Al was actually at with me that year and I was standing over there most of the time. So it's like so they, they've made a lot of improvements. I know it's I mean, you're never going to make everybody happy. And it, it's a hard thing to do. I mean. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, met new friends like you guys. Oh, and, and, that's uh, what I said. You can't, because yeah. we're living in Pittsburgh, no one plays their red, so it's hard to find friends. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no like a limited fun. group, right? Yeah, and it's just like for four days of that, it's, it goes so fast. And it's like, mm -hmm. man, why is, I waited so long for this. And then <laughs> here it is. Good. Like there I left isn't. two weeks ago today or whatever, you know? What yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah, so it's been 15 to, like, it just went so fast. And, then you get down, you know, I potted for a week now, you know, I got at it again this week. A little yeah. Bit. And you had it and you had a really great day today playing Gulfstream in the tournament. Yeah. So who knows? I could end up winning Friday and I'm in like, I yeah, mean, that's it. Never know. I'm at and least I got a chance. That's all I try to give myself. So. Yeah. The year that I qualified, I had mentioned before that I had a health issue that I had to wait a year to, to participate this year, but it was on Easter Sunday and I got the, 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 the bid, I, I got it and we had to wait a long time to actually play it. But yeah, you never know when it's going to be, be your day. I mean, yeah, that's like the year I won too. That, that COVID, if you remember, he, right. Steve Vick says on her, Oh, it'll be all cleared up by then. It wasn't. I never got out there for another 14 months after that interview. Oh, wow. So, so we yeah. waited a year and a half. Cause that's the year it was in August and it was Saratoga right. and Delmore. And that was fun. I mean, yeah, yeah. Those are my tracks and I was excited for that. And I thought, you know, I know everybody loves Saratoga. I'm a, I'm a big, I do good at Delmore. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And I love the Delmore turf and I was so excited that, you know, I did good betting, but yet again, I didn't do good in the tournament, but that year, but it was fun. That was a different thing. It was just, if you stepped outside, forget it. Your shoes were melting that year though. It was like 150 odd, like <sighs> wow. it was in August, you know? Yeah. This, this was like, one morning I stepped out and said, it's colder here than upstate yeah. New York. Yeah. I know that was a little disappointing from Tyler. Cause it, I would have liked it. Do you see the weather right after we got back? It was beautiful there. Oh, really? They yeah. Showed pictures of the NCAA tournament and the pool. Right. Right. And hey, I, I, I didn't tell you this, I, but I went to this. Did you ever go in the CVS next to the horseshoe? Oh yeah. I go there all the time. Okay. Did you see everything's locked up there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the, the lady was telling me that, they did inventory the previous month that that we were there, and she said they lost two point seven million in merchandise stolen. So, oh wow, they locked. They had to lock every. I I just wanted to get like a razor to shave. Well, yeah, shave I go in there all all the time because right. I. I mean, one year I was buying cereal there. I mean, like <laughs> like you know, my bank was so low. I mean, yeah, I'm a big CVS guy. We only made one trip this year and got a lot of stuff there. But uh, yeah, everything's. I, I wasn't prepared for that because I was like, I'm used to going to a supermarket and bringing stuff at home. Yeah, it, you can't get that there. It's to, it's hard out out there to have like to do that. Like I've I've learned that, that there was a CVS in the uh, Treasure Island, which was nice. Oh, okay, um, it was actually in Treasure Island. Right. Like they have one in there. So that was nice. So CBS, I'm a big uh, Vegas uh, person, you know, this year, yeah. not as much, but 
you know, I even was going to bring snacks this year, but then I had too much stuff in my suitcase. I had to eliminate them. Like, yeah, let's talk about the travel because you had a little uh, delay in coming oh, back home to Pittsburgh, right? What what happened? Yeah, well, going out, we got canceled. I'm still right. working on Southwest owes me that. Uh, I'm still working with them for that. They we got canceled going out, and they took half the plane through Denver, half through Chicago. We get there at one in the morning instead of getting there at seven. Wow. So that kind of messed you up for the next yeah. day, you know. And then instead of having a seat on the out, you know, now you're in the middle. You're the lot. You went from B three on Southwest, you know, getting on B three, B six to C fifty or something. You know, you're the last yeah. one on. Yeah. And so then going home, we get delayed, which this has never happened before. We get right. delayed and we're there. And then Joe Rich, he left. He said, I'm not doing this again. He goes, right. we're delayed. It's going to start. He left. The, so, but I guess it was only an hour and a half. Maybe we're delayed. We get on the plane. I type Joe. I'm like, oh, we're on. We're getting out. We're getting out. We're on the runway. Uh -huh. We're going out to the runway. He stops the plane. I'm like, okay, he's waiting. We're in line or something. Then he turns around. And everybody starts looking out the window and I'm like, oh my, oh. he goes back and says, oh, this, and then the maintenance comes up and says, oh, everybody's going to have to get off. His plane's down for a day. So we call, we're calling Joe, the Godfather, Joe Rich. <laughs> the Godfather. <laughs> he says, get out of here. And we go over to the M and Henderson. Oh man, they take care of us there. He gave us a suite. He wow. somehow he knew, I don't know. He got us a suite. We had a uh, big, I mean, Tyler ate great. That was right. like, that was the best food I ate all week. Uh, was that night, and and uh, Joe had it all taken. It was all comp. Like he said, go up and get whatever you want. Tell the lady, you know. And uh, he had it all set up for us, so we we ate great there. And then I made money that night gambling, so it was fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. It turned out to be a good good thing after you. Yeah, that that, that Henderson's nice out there. I like Joe. Had, Joe took us yeah. to dinner at Green Valley too. Uh, yeah, my brother, uh, the one that was there Sunday, he he was there the following day. Uh, yeah, I think it was the Green Valley. If right. I would go out like with my wife or whoever, I would definitely stay out in Henry. I just like it, like for my age now. And right. I like poker machines. That seems to be their thing out there. Nice right. sports books. It, it's it's nice. I mean, it's nice to see the strip, but that gets old walking out there. You know, like yeah, I like the uh, well walking through the Paris. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, let's see, they moved their sports book. So that's the thing. When everybody would get there Tuesday, Wednesday, you'd hang out in the horse. You go where you go. You go to the race book, and you're going to see 50 yeah. players in a race book Wednesday or more. Right. All talking, seeing each other, and they're playing. And now they didn't have a race book at, at Horseshoe. There's no race book. Like, you have oh, to yeah, go to Paris. True, yeah. Right, right. You have to walk all the way over there to play. I guess guys were doing that. We We didn't. We didn't do that, but I think Ed did. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, because that's where we you just see everybody else. Yeah, you know, socialize before find everybody. That's where your guys are going to go to the race book, even if right. whoever's running on Wednesday. So, so I, that's one thing. I, it's kind of weird they have their, you know, we bet all that money in there, but they don't have. I guess now that Caesars owns that whole block or whatever, it's mm -hmm. like monopolized with Caesars, and then someone was telling me Caesars and uh, who MGM, and then. Right. Only up by the wind and up in that area is the only properties are individually owned, like, and then out in Henderson, I guess. I don't know. But well, it looks like the NHC is going to, they're locked in for at least a couple more years. Two more years. Over. I like the basketball being on there. That, I mean, oh, that's yeah. for me. I'm a big college guy. And then our right, game right. was making a run. And then uh, that, that was just, I mean, I had a profit every day I was there on betting basketball, believe it or not. And, that right. was fun just because the games are on and conference games are so competitive. And, you know, I love how about, that. uh, how with the final 16 teams, do you see anybody? Well, Who's your team you think is going to win it? We need Illinois and Gonzaga. I mean, Tyler and I have a draft. We're in a player draft. Okay. Like I was telling you about, we drafted right. 25 players. So we're in fourth place right now out of like 14 guys. And, uh, I had to leave. I left Tyler after the ninth round because my daughter, unfortunately, was at the hospital. One, yeah, right. I left Tyler hanging, and then my battery went dead, and I couldn't. So he did all right. I mean, we're in fourth. We're hanging in there. The top three get paid. So, oh, okay. We so. need Gonzaga to get through. There, all our teams are dogs in that now that we have players on it. But I, 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 I was hitting them games. I've been hitting them games until Sunday. I had a bad day betting. Um, 
Tem- Temple ruined it for you. <laughs> yeah. Half well, I did it. they were in already. I told you they were in, and then they had to play another game. Right, right. They must have played six games, it seemed like, when I was out there. I mean, wow. Like, I mean, I don't know how many they played, five probably, but it just – they kept playing. I thought they won the championship the day before, and then UAB uh, – UAB got them in. But, yeah, we ran – I mean, we ran on New Mexico and out there, Duquesne, uh, NC State. We got that big guy for NC State. I don't know if you've seen him play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have him going. We That's like our favorite guy. He's now. a lefty, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I didn't know anything about him. Yeah. So we have him left. We got a couple guys for Gonzaga, Illinois' top scorer. So we need, like, it would be good if NC State would win, too. Right, right. And Creighton. We have a good guy for Creighton, too, so. They're all dogs, though, but not yeah. big dogs. I mean, NC State's getting six and a half, but I I would tell I, – I like all the dogs this week except Clemson and uh, Alabama. I, I like and uh, North Carolina in that game. And uh, who does Clemson have? Arizona, I think, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, seven of the, the Elite Eight still alive in a couple of pools I'm in, so – yeah, we'll Tyler, wait, my goes. neighbor, 247 people went, and Tyler's the only one that has Illinois. I couldn't believe that. Oh, really? Wow. That's a shocker to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I'd rather be in his situation where I have Iowa State. Right. There's about 10 people, and then I have North Carolina on my other one. There's like 50 people have them. So then you got to go against them. You know, if they win it, you got to. So if Illinois wins it, he's in, you know, or yeah, if Illinois yeah. gets there and plays like an NC State or something, he's in. You know, so yeah, I'm I'm in a pool with uh, my childhood friend in uh, from Connecticut, and there's so many people, husky, husky, husky. So yeah, they look yeah. unbeatable right now, though. I mean, like they, like I don't know how anybody can beat them right now. I mean, right. I guess this San Diego will have a lot to play for. I mean, with the rematch and uh, like you know, they play good D. It's probably a bad matchup for them. I mean, they probably don't like playing this type of team i wouldn't think i mean i right i don't know but i don't know if they'll win but sandy you know they're getting 10 and a half that's the biggest line but you never yeah, know it's three point shots change i mean if these guys know. Go cold, right and then you how know. about that guy for oakland he was fun to watch yeah yeah they, they won the one game right yeah they yeah. won and he had a bunch of that no one had him in my pool like because oakland only like one or two guys got picked from those teams and okay and I guess he – I don't think he averaged a ton all year. You know, that was just a big game because they have that big – other guy was real good. So, I don't think anybody had him in our pool. But, man, I wish I would have had him. That would have been nice. Uh, yeah. It's like uh, you find these guys after the thing's over, you know. Right. It's like uh, Steph Curry when he went on a tear that year in the – Yep. Yep. That's where you're Davidson. finding, you know, these guys yeah. always end up – these teams you never – I mean, it's mostly chalk in there, though. All the one and twos are still in. Yeah. I've never seen a yeah. year like that. So NC before – the only oh, double digit yeah. left. They're the only ones, right? Yep. Yeah. So before before we wrap up, I wanted to – since opening day for everybody, the whole you know official opening day is tomorrow, give a brief synopsis on how your Pirates <laughs> are going to look this year. Well – like once again, Tyler's a big fan of the Pirates. I mean, uh, right. he just showed me his bets. He got Cruz over 30 homers. Oh, okay. Uh, what's the kid, the good pitcher, Max, or whatever, uh, Keller. Yeah. He got him over 200 yeah. strikeouts. I don't like them bets are tough because these guys get hurt. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, Cruz, you know, he's coming off. You know, I mean, I was a freak last year, injury. I mean, he, he can, I mean, it's a short park there. I mean, he could have a big year, but. Yeah. uh I like the box where they're heading. I just don't know about their pitching. I mean, who's I'll, that young pitcher they got? The the phenom they're talking about. That Jared. Oh, we we have a that kid. They keeping him down at first round pick. The uh, kid that was the MVP of the NCAs. At, oh yeah, uh, that's the guy. Yeah, I was I was reading about. Yeah, him. they're keeping him down another. Um, oh, okay. Till June, so they get that extra year. They always do that stuff. I mean, right. Pirates love to bring a guy up at like twenty six, like. Where Atlanta, he would have played. He's on Atlanta. The guy would have played seven years by now. But yeah, uh, yeah, right. I mean, this guy's older too. Um, Skeens, Paul Skeens. Skeens. That's exactly. They have another yeah, young kid who made the roster. I was surprised they kept him. This this kid's supposed to be, look out for. I know you're in fantasy, Jarrett Jones. Okay, it's his name. He can throw Jones. hard, and he he hasn't gave up a run in in exhibition sixteen innings, and he made the. He's going to be our third starter. 
Oh, he made the team. Okay. Yes, they actually right. made the team. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, okay. If one of my guys falters, maybe I'll pick him up if he's available. So. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't think anybody has that guy. Right. Um, yeah, because he, he he was not on the radar anybody. And I couldn't believe the Pirates actually gave him a shot on the roster. Like, because there's another kid I love we have, and they, he's only 19. They, there's no way they're going to let Tamar Johnson. He's going to be really good. Or two, he was our fourth pick two years ago. He Pirates got a lot of good things going. If, but, you know, they, they all got to stay healthy. We lost yeah. to one of the catchers this year. It was good. So we'll see if this kid can catch at Hank Davis. So where where's their triple A affiliate? Indianapolis. Oh, okay. And so, then they, they bring guys up from Altoona because we like it's Altoona's only an hour and a half, two hours from Pittsburgh. That's their double way. Okay. So it's hard to say. They've been bringing guys up from air once in a while, like more often than they used to. Um, you know, but yeah, that's that's not, I love Should minor be. league baseball too. Yeah, yeah, you were you were telling me so. Should be a should be a great. Yeah, this season. is a great time of year. I mean, you got horse yeah. racing, you got right. the NCAA tournament, Masters coming up. I mean, oh yeah, you know. that that's coming up, and you yeah. got uh, and you got to get Tyler, your son, officially an N NHC NTRA member, so he can uh, yeah. officially qualify. He, next I was year. gonna have him. He was gonna do it that Sunday, but I was surprised they got that many people in that tournament. Yeah, that would be when we that'll be the last thing we'll talk about. That Silver Sunday. What 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 was your well, take that about one, that? I'm saying they had another one for non qualifiers. Oh yeah, yeah. I think my they dad was giving away five. It. I thought that would be a good one for him to start out. Right. And I mean, we seen there was like sixteen hundred with two three hours left. Wow. So they might have had two thousand in it. I didn't check. So that's another thing they gave out points for mm -hmm. that we weren't in. So that that's why I think his points is going to be a little higher this year to get in it's tough doing the getting in the points if you don't have them because <laughs> you yeah you gotta you know if you get close and you gotta have a bank to play every week i mean it would be nicer just to qualify this year like and not be right just points. get hot and for first chance for you is this friday the 75 dollar horse player yeah and, and you're hot right now so today i was but yeah today but still you, you never well you, that's you, the way it goes for me i'll right I'll, I could stay hot now for a week or two, like and hit right. every day feeders. I mean, that's the way. Hey, it goes. let's um. Oh, I cut you off. I was going to ask you. That's something. right. Yeah, I was going to be asking one last thing about we we know you are a budding horse racing announcer to caller of the races, and you've got some history going all the way back to your youngster out in Pittsburgh. Maybe uh, give our our listeners and viewers a synopsis on Eric Alada's broadcasting career oh huh? oh on the rod uh, roger houston's like my uh idol he's okay. like the greatest harness racing announcer of all time he's still out there going out of the meadows i don't he still does races at the uh little bronze jug in ohio he's in his oh, 80s wow roger the great roger right now like i said i always wanted that was always my dream i wish i'd have pursued that but that's the way it goes sometimes you know um you know but yeah, yeah, you were in that always, contest, right? He would always, you know, and the gate swings around the turn, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to have those taglines. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Who, who's other than Roger? How about uh, Thoroughbred Racing? Do you have a favorite announcer? Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, there's been, uh, I, I like the kid down at uh, Gulfstream. I think he's really good now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pete Aiello. Yeah, he's really yeah. up and coming. I mean, I like him and, you know, then the, you know, uh, there's been so many that retired now lately, but there's a lot of good young ones. They, that kid at Oakland's good too. I, when I hear him, I keep thinking it's Golden Gate running though. Oh yeah. Matt did I him, haven't right? got yeah. used to him at Oakland yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm but, a Tom Durkin fan. Oh yeah. Tom Durkin, no yeah. doubt. Tom he, Durkin. He's, st he's still at the horse racing museum. I mean, we're, we live about five minutes away from there. Uh, he, during, I think racing season, he gives like, tours private tours people have to pay a little extra than a regular tour at the museum so yeah he went out on top i guess like uh you know because some of these guys are still you know then all of a sudden they'll show you like he thought trevor was done but he's what doing delmar now yeah didn't didn't uh, durkin do a race last year yeah he might have yeah he did one of the the big race i don't know if it was triple crown or breeders cup he did 
one of the big or Travers. I don't know one of the big ones he did. Yeah, and what's his name? I was ashamed, Durkin, when he left, and and uh, what's his name got the call? The American Pharaoh. Uh, oh guy, yeah, uh, Larry of, Colmus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah I know Durkin. He's just on TVG now. I mean, I guess right. he filled in. He fills in for Pete like two weeks a year, I think. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah I did hear him one a couple of days on air. But yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've been in contact, you know, online with Jason Beam and I bought his. Oh, book. I like Jason. Yeah. Too. Really good guy. Yeah. Yeah. I never, I never, uh, I haven't met him yet, but I've been following him since his days on, uh, Bet America or whatever. Then we used to oh, play yeah. tournaments on Bet America. Uh, right. Right. Twin Spires took him out like, uh, another Churchill, uh, you know, yeah, Churchill gets right. me yeah. mad. We start talking about them because they, they eliminate a lot of things. <laughs> that'll be that'll be the next interview. <laughs> yeah, that's a <another laughs> right. but Jason Beam, yeah, I why he was in that movie and everything. Uh he calls a race in a movie. Uh, oh, he does. I didn't know that. Yeah, I forget what it's called, but yeah, I like listening to Jason. I, I was glad I found him. I thought he was done, and I just found him a couple months ago again. So I try to listen to him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh I mean cool guy and tells it straight and everything oh yeah yep. i got my lights uh going nuts here <laughs> i'm trying to well hopefully i'll have my camera up and running next time oh yeah if i you know if you want ever want to have me i'll definitely come oh on. yeah hey i'd love having you on today so the first of many appearances come on yeah that'll be great yeah i mean i, I want to thank I'm you ed up. and and the godfather uh joe joe rich and you know you guys are great great to spend four or five days with you guys just talking about life and sports and and handicapping yeah, well, and, we're yeah. always like that's what we start so you're a couple of our guys didn't make it but you're you're part of the table now so we'll oh, see thanks you next year uh you guys do you guys sit at the same place or you it well we originally it started off as 38 that's where we were but then we got bumped out of there and then we moved to 48 now ed said next year we're going 58 oh so, okay I had, uh, I had originally, I didn't know where to sit. I just walked in the first day. I sat at 56 and then I saw my dad sitting at the table where we eventually wound up for the first chance, last chance. And I switched my number. So I'm happy I did. Yeah. It's, it's weird how that sets up, like how you end up, like I met a great guy. Uh, I call him Buffalo Bob. Uh -huh. He didn't make it this year, but, uh, he was actually in it when I was in it years ago my first time at Red Rock and I'll eat, you know, and he went years without making it, but we were in that same one, but we never met. And now we became good friends the last few years. It would just been nice spot. I met him in 2008 or whatever, you know? Right. Well, hopefully he's going to make it. Yeah. 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 So you, you might be the first one to get, uh, get the, the golden ticket on Friday. So, well, so we'll I'll see. be rooting for you. Yep. Are you, you in this week or? Oh, uh, not yet. I, I mean, I, I've, I've tried, I, you know, like I said, I had my, my backups, you know, did well. I don't know yeah. if I would have gotten a, a thing. Well, that's like, I like to put my backups in the five, seven or $12 one. That way, if they win, then I get, a, you know, especially at 12, you'll get a couple hundred bucks and you can play more, but. Right. You know, oh yeah. You, like you said, the seven dollar when it kind of, it's top heavy, you got to kind of win. If there's 25 people in it, you know, it'll pay like a hundred for the winner, and then it'll all the way down like twenty three for second. So it's like you got to win that one usually. I don't do you, know why. Do you they... Try to play the uh, feeders for Saturday and Sunday. Not as much. I mean, I'll see if I. It just depends if I win credit. Like sometimes Friday, if you don't win but you finish high, you'll get one hundred and fifty credit or seventy five, and then. Oh, okay. Then yeah. I'll start playing. There. Yeah. Did you? Uh, did you do your scratch off? Yeah, I got 10. I already used that. That was oh, okay. what I played in last week. I used yeah. that last week. I had it in my like laptop bag and I found it today before I was setting up to talk with you. And I was like, I thought it was a lottery ticket. I was going to give it to my wife. I said, wait a second. And I scratched. I got 25. So you got 25. Oh, yeah. yeah. First yeah. I heard that. Oh, OK. So that's good. beginner's yeah, luck. I only beginner's got 10. Luck. Yeah. Um, I heard yeah. someone got a thousand. I heard a guy at the airport talking about it. But, oh, okay. They uh, do that every year. 10. I use that stuff. I already use my. You did your. I always do the one you get twenty five credit. Oh, for, okay. When you join the tour, it's seventy five. You might as well do the one you get the credit back. You get like thirty back for the credit. Oh, when you join the turn, you get you get credit every year. 
if you do 75, they give you 30 horse tourneys instead of joining oh, okay. 50. Oh, okay. I, I think I did. You you're going to spend that anyway, but I already, yeah, I already used that oh. too. Cause that was on that top of that, that 10. So that's what I played last week a little bit. Right. I, I was playing mostly at $12 and $7 with that little bit to try to win money. And then this week I put a few bucks in. Well, it's time to do well with the basketball games to, and uh, get opening that first day tomorrow. Game. Let's go Bucks. Opening day. Yeah. Hopefully the weather's, I don't know what it's like out here. Where are you who, guys who, playing? Who are you rooting for? You the, Oh, I'm uh, a Mets fan. Mets, not the yeah. not the Red Sox. Not the Red Sox. My team I can't stand are the Yankees. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's the I'm, Yankees, Cowboys. I'm trying to think other sports. I'm a Brahma. I'm, I'm actually Cleveland's my second team. The Indians oh, okay. or whatever wow. they are now. And yeah. then uh, I actually like the Browns too a little bit. Like that's weird that I'm from right. Pittsburgh, but I worked I know, up right? in Cleveland for a while and I just seen their passion. I just give them people so much credit. Yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know if I told you or I, I I told Joe, but when I was growing up playing baseball, uh, uh, Charlie Nagy's brother was on my team, and uh, his brother Rich and Charlie Nagy was a couple years younger than me, but we would play against him, and he was an Indian pitcher. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, he was really good. We played wiffle ball at their house. I don't know if I smoked him with a hitter or not. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to be a major league player. That's always a good story. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's why I said Dave Bednar, a closer. I graduated with his dad for the Pirates. Oh, that's the right. Pirates. Yeah, yeah, right. And his other kid was the MVP, first round pick of the Giants. Are hoping big things out of him this year. Yeah. So that's a guy to keep keep an eye on. Maybe I don't think he'll be up this year, but maybe. Right. Um, they're saying he's going to start out in double way, I think. So, right. A lot of, a lot of good sports players out your way. And, and we got a top handicappers are out in Pittsburgh, small group, but they're all tough. What they yeah. do in Youngstown, <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. We've lost, we've lost all the little OTBs out here. I mean, there's none that we miss them. So we don't have yeah, no think, OTBs. No, um, they, they kind of got rid of most of them out here. They got one in Connecticut sports Haven. Yeah, I told yeah. you I was up at that tournament. Before. Yeah, yeah, with like the Harper or whatever. Yeah, that's where Yale is, New Haven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. all the pizza and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, hey, Eric, Eric Alata, it's great, great to have you on the show. Great to meet you and uh, become friends with you and your son Tyler, Ed Reedy, and the Godfather Joe Rich. So, hey, God willing, we're gonna stay healthy. We're gonna stay lucky, and we're gonna be in the yep. same time next Thanks, year. Thanks, Joe. Anytime. Yeah, I'd love to come on anytime. Yeah, I enjoy. Great, it. Yeah, great, great talking. What well, we love, horse racing, and handicapping and tournaments, and everything like that. Thanks to the NTRA and the NHC people. So, uh, we'll talk soon, Eric. All right, take care, Joe. Okay, thanks. thanks.